My name is Clinton Callahan, and I've written a couple of books and designed a couple of trainings, Expand the Box and Possibility Labs, and I'm the co-founder of the Next Culture Research and Training Center, which the main office is in Germany. I studied physics in school and had my own computer and electronics company for a few years until my life fell apart accidentally, and I discovered my true profession, which was to be a memetic engineer. And that was in about 1990. And I completely changed professions. And since then, I've been developing upgraded thoughtware for human beings. So what we've discovered is there are actually simply basically four feelings that a human being can experience and express. These are the four basic feelings, anger, sadness, fear, and joy. And out of those four feelings, you can mix together the entire you know, spectrum of human experience with emotions. Feelings are a, a very human and naturally organic resource that human beings have as a fuel source for bringing our archetypal lineage, our true calling into the world. The carrier wave of every communication is feelings. And so it's so important to understand the basic mechanics of how feelings work so that you can communicate in your relationships so that love can happen. For example, there's a distinction between what you could call feelings and what you call emotions. And the distinction is easy to distinguish because even though feelings and emotions are both feel like anger, sadness, fear, or joy, or a mixed feelings, in fact, if the feeling experience lasts longer than about three minutes, it's not a feeling, it's an emotion, which means that it, the origin, the, the source of it comes from somebody else or comes from the past. It's common in modern culture to repress the so-called negative feelings of anger or sadness or especially fear because the program is we're not supposed to actually be afraid. And so we, we put the feelings down and put a numbness bar very high and we, we use a lot of our energy in our daily life to suppress the energy we have to use our life as an adult man or woman. So just you have to imagine that for 20, 30, 40 years, a person has been repressing the sadness or their, their anger from something that happened a long time ago. That shapes their muscles. It shapes their inner organs. It shapes the way chemicals flow through their brain and their body. And that has consequences. Part of the basic understanding of how human beings should come together and work together as we're taught by modern culture has to do with this pyramid structure, the hierarchical structure of who's the boss, where's my place, and how do I fit into this triangular pyramidal diagram. And then you know what the, where the power flows, you know how it goes. To take this pyramid and expand its dimensions so that in fact it goes all the way around, you have all of a sudden a circle. You actually have a, you know, a galaxy. You have a galaxy of possibilities that were before restricted to a, a linear power flow. So in the galaxy, in the circle, which is the basic design of next culture, is, is you have an interplay of relationships that are possible at different levels. And the thing about the circle that's so great is in comparison to a pyramid where there's limited room at the top that you have to fight to try to get to these top positions and there's limited room at the top. In the circle, there's unlimited room at the top because anybody who can take responsibility to source a project can run the project and the circle simply gets bigger, that's all. So there's no competition anymore for these high power positions because every position is a high power position. It's winning happening, it's a totally different game. So there's a longing inside of people, a longing for uh, being held and connected in a wider arena than simply our own little survival life where, where we can actually speak to somebody without being afraid that they're going to use it against us. Where I can talk to you and you're going to listen to me and you're going to talk to me and I'm going to listen to you and what's going to happen is no matter what you say, we're going to get closer. Human beings are here to to unfold like flowers and you know things in nature that we see unfold in these incredibly beautiful manifestations. We're designed for this. So 
in a community, we have a common commitment. We have a common commitment to a context where we can grow up and, and unfold. Then this is like fertilizer. This is like sunshine and rain and warm weather for us to unfold in. And it just takes some work to get there. And you can do it. So another way to start a whole community type project is to start with a small number of people with a fundamental agreement and commitment to a specific context. Your work is to deepen the context. Then people around will slowly feel this vibe that here's a context that I am attracted to and they will show up and they will all come because of the context. They won't be coming for community. They'll be coming for context. And as they come like that, and everybody's meeting in this one context, the context itself provides projects for the group. And when people start working together on these projects out of the same context, the side effect is the experience of deep community. And this is a huge distinction to know when you're setting up a community project. This is a tiny, uh, a tiny community that builds up when people become mature human beings. Because, you know, in modern culture, we're basically taught that you're supposed to find the one person who's going to love you, and then you're going to live with them for the rest of your life. And this is a survival orientation towards love, because, in fact, the entire universe is made out of love. Love is such abundance, but, but if, if you allow your, if you grow into being able to accept and receive so much love happening, you'll discover that there are really so many people that you can love at the same time. It takes some practice to find out that actually that the love that I was looking for all around out there is what the universe is made out of. And I can actually source love when I walk down the street. So I don't have to look if somebody is going to love me or not going to love me because I love them. And then there's an immense amount of love available. Once you enter extraordinary love, you start discovering that there's even a, a domain beyond that called archetypal love, which becomes impersonal. It's not like I love you or you love me. It's love is in the space and you can feel it. You can feel it vibrating in your, in your cells, in your whole system. It's in the space. And what a way to live. This is our home, actually. And it's not a feeling. These are archetypal love is essentially the source of consciousness and the source of responsibility in the world. I mean, responsibility is consciousness in action. And consciousness is the love as it hits the material world. And the material form of love is consciousness. And what a cool thing. The news from modern culture is usually bad. And it's so amazing to actually find another channel for news. And as soon as you do, uh, you'll find out what I've found out, which is that there are experiments going on all over the world of people coming together below the radar of modern culture. So basically, invisibly, they're coming together and building a global network of, of a sustainable, regenerative, next adult-based human culture on the earth, and it's working. And I can give you so many examples of websites, projects, houses, buildings, communities, global eco-village networks. I can give you examples of intentional communities. I can give you examples and they're all there. It will blow your mind what's going on out there. So please come and enter the game.